In this video, I'll be sharing you tips on how to color a line art piece. Line art is something that's illustrated with just black outlines, and we're going to put color and shadow and highlight into it. Let's get started. First thing you're going to do is start up Photoshop. Once that's up, we're going to minimize it and import our downloaded black and white image. Once it's loaded up, we're going to unlock it by clicking on the lock button, and we're going to double click on the layer and type in line art for that layer. I can hit the I to shut the layer on or off. I'm going to create a new layer, and we're going to call that new layer background. We're going to move it underneath the line art layer. What I want to show you is we're going to find the paint bucket tool, and in a little bit we're going to put white into the background layer. If you want to select the color, you can open up the color palette and you can pick a myriad of colors. We also want to check the window and make sure our layers and navigator tools are open. We'll be using those. The navigator tool is great for zooming in and out of your project. With that set up, we'll select white, click OK, and then use the paint bucket tool to click and dump the white in there. All right. We're going to make sure the line art layer is set to multiply, not normal. And then we're going to go down and we're going to click new layer. And we're going to create new layers that go underneath the line art layer, but in front of the background layer. We're going to create one for hair, one for skin, one for eyes, and one for the shirt. So just keep repeating this process until you have individual layers for each category. You may have as many layers as you want for yours. Now let's learn how to select some colors and swatches. There's some things artists use to help them pick colors. One thing is you can go and find any color you want and just start coloring until your heart's content like this. But say I was trying to find a skin color. I can look through here, but I'm not, if I'm not quite sure if that's the color I want, what I could do is get some reference images to help me out. I downloaded an image offline of a comic book character, and I'm going to import that in a second into here, and I'll show you how I can use the eyedropper tool to pick colors from that to help me with mine. So I'm going to import it just like I did into my file. And I can use the Move tool to minimize the image size, like so. I'll just put it off to the side. Now that I have this situated where I want, I'm going to take this layer and just call it a color swatch layer. It's going to help me a lot for picking my hair color and skin tone when I need it. It's something a digital artist uses to uh, keep their swatches together and pick their colors a little faster. So I'm going to pick my eyedropper tool and click on the lighter skin tone. You'll see it appeared there. And now I'm going to pick my brush tool. And if I try to click on my brush tool, it might say to rasterize, just click OK. And then I'm just going to make a larger brush and make sure it's at 100% opacity and click once. There's my lighter skin tone. I'll take the eyedropper and find the darker skin tone now and create a darker skin tone swatch there. And I'm going to do the same thing for my light, medium, and dark hair tones. I just wanted to show you this so you know how to maybe pull from another image, but you could also just make up the colors on your own. It's really up to you. Okay, now that I did that, um, I'll be able to move my image off and just leave the swatches there. If you notice that you, any images you have are moving, make sure they stay locked with the layer. And if you could do the same thing with your background, that usually keeps things nice and in right in the right spot. So now with the Move tool, I'm going to just minimize and just allow my swatches to hover over there for the meantime. 
Okay. I noticed that I didn't do a skin layer, so I'm going to make a new layer and just call it skin. Before we start coloring, we're going to do one other thing. It's going to be uh, just cleaning up any of my original line art uh, that may have had some mistakes that I want to refine. So let's take a look at how to do that. We'll also take a look at brushes and how they work. Okay, so say I was about to start painting, I'm going to click my brush tool. And if I just use the mouse, I will get brush streaks like this. So if I use a tablet, I'll be able to get thick to thin pressure. And if I just want to fill, I'll fill all one big basic color. To make your brush larger or smaller, you can use these shortcuts with the bracket keys. That will help you move a lot faster. I'm going to use the eraser tool now. It works just like a brush tool. You can make it larger and smaller and just erase away what you don't want. Here is the brush window. It shows the brush I have selected and other ones I might want to select. You might want a soft brush or a harsh brush. It's up to you for preference. Now, before I get coloring, I'm going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to unlock my line art layer. And I'm going to look for any inconsistencies I don't want. So just with the eraser, I'm going to get rid of anything that came from the original drawing. You can also switch to a, br a black brush tool and draw in something that you wish was a stronger line at this point too and add to your line art. So you can take away and you can also add if you'd like just by switching to black on your brush tool. Okay. Okay, the step, next step is color flatting. Color flatting means bringing in the basic colors that you want before you do any shading or highlighting. So I'm going to go on the skin layer and I'm going to start bringing my skin in first. So I'm going to zoom in, pick the proper color I want for the skin, and make sure it's at 100% and start filling. So I'm just using the brush I like. I usually tend to do the outer edges first, especially in tight areas, and then just fill in the center really quickly. So we'll just go through an accelerated process. I'm going to be coloring in all the skin tone. You are more than likely going to make mistakes when you fill in, so you can quickly switch to your eraser tool and touch up anything that you went past the edge with that you didn't like, and do any cleanup. You can always do that later on, but it's up to you how you want to go through that step. Next step is go through the other layers and get the color flats done for the hair, for the shirt, and for the eyes. So again, I'll use my eyedropper to select the color of the hair I want. Or I can just free pick it out on my color swatch or my color window. And away you go. Next, I'll show you clipping masks, which will help you with shading and highlights on an image if you'd like. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select and create a new layer above a layer we want to shade. In this case, it's the eyes. I'm going to select Create Clipping Mask. And it shows a downward arrow, and this layer is dedicated only to the eye layer. So because I already colored in blue on the eye layer, when I color or shade here, it only will affect the blue area and it will not 
interfere with any other area I colored. So I'm going to click the eyedropper tool to find the blue I've had. And I say I want to get a darker version. I can find a darker blue. Click OK. And then with my brush tool, I can set my opacity instead of 100% to a lower opacity. And I can also pick soft brushes for some soft shading. So let me bring the opacity about below 20%. What I'm going to do is now as I color, I'm going to softly bring in the darker color without you seeing any edges per se. And that will create some more realistic shading. So I'm adding a little bit of shadow of blue to the upper part of the iris to make it convincingly dropping a shadow in there. It's only going at about 17% 17, 17 each click. So it creates a really nice soft transition. So with that done, I'm going to move on to the skin layer next. So I'll click on the skin layer, create a new layer above it, make it a clipping mask, and go to my darker skin tone. And again, at around 17% with a soft brush, I'm going to start to add a shadow on the skin where I'd like. And what's nice is this can't interfere or go in the hair because the hair is on a separate layer. So it's literally housed only where I added the first skin tone before. It'll take some practice for you to get comfortable shading, but taking a look at references can be very helpful. I can also now pick a lighter skin tone than the one I originally started with and create some soft highlighted edges too, like in the center of the head, on the cheeks, and on the chin. That'll add some dimension. I'm going very soft here to create some soft dimension to the face. The next step is the hair, and I'm gonna try something a little different with the hair. I'm gonna try to create more of a cell shaded graphic look uh, compared to how I did the skin. So again, I'm going to create a clippy mask above the hair. And I'm going to change my brush. And make sure that I have a darker hair tone than the one that's currently on my hair now. It's up to you to play with how dark you want to get or how light you want to get. Now here, instead of a soft brush, I'm going to use a hard kind of like ink marker type brush. And every time I flick, I have a darker tone. But the reason my tones right here are not so dark is because I still have my opacity set at 17%. So if I bring it to 100%, I'll get the extreme dark value I was looking for. There's a lot of animated characters and comic book artists who use a style like this for hair, especially in graphic novels, where you're flicking to describe shadow as opposed to soft shading. Many times it's called cell shading. You'll see that in like Dragon Ball Z, especially um, in that animated show. Now that I have the dark shadows done, one other thing I can do, instead of doing the highlights and shadows on one layer for the clipping mask, I can create another clipping mask layer just by going up here, selecting clipping mask, and I can have one for shadows and one for highlights. So create my new layer, then create a clipping mask. And now you see they're both still attached to that another layer. So again, I'll eye drop and find my basic skin tone. I mean, or, sorry, hair color. And then I'm going to create, uh, get a lighter color, see which one I like. Maybe I'll go with the one I swatched before, like a nice tannish one. It's pretty bold. And I'm going to do the same approach as the shadows. I'm just going to flick my highlights from top to bottom now. Remember, if I don't like something, I can erase it back and it won't affect anything else.
I'm gonna add a little bit of pink to my lips here because I didn't add it before. So here's some concluding thoughts, okay? We covered creating layers for your skin and everything. We created clipping masks to shade. Uh, here I'm just showing you again. I can go back to my skin layer and if I miss something, I can go back. I'm gonna add a little bit of a pinkish hue to the lower lip. Again, I can select different brushes. There's hundreds of brushes to pick from, so you can always attempt different ones. And I'm just gonna add a little bit in there just to get a little touch. So you can always go back and fix your work, which is nice. Those swatches were there to help me. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you click off that line art, you get some pretty ghostly looking imagery. Yeah, try clicking your layers on and off and see what each layer was responsible for. You can have as many layers as you want or as a few, but you can control a lot by having different layers. Thank you and happy coloring.